Never Stop Learning, week 221. We're going to take a quick look at Bevel and Boss on live text in Adobe Illustrator CC 2015. All right, so these techniques are not new techniques, but uh, they're very useful techniques. And the question does come up often, how do I apply Bevel and Boss on live text in Adobe Illustrator? So I'm going to get started by hitting the T key on my keyboard. And it's going to give me the type tool. I'll click once on my document and just lay out some text to play with. All right, so I'm going to put in text, command return to accept that change, and then just make the text nice and big. All right, this way you guys can see it more clearly. All right, if you take a look at the bottom left section of my screen, you're going to notice that I have the fill activated. I'm going to get rid of that fill by hitting the forward slash key on my keyboard, and now I have no appearance at the moment. So let's go to the appearance panel over in the upper right section of my screen. Now at the bottom of the panel, I have access to this, add new fill. I'm going to add a new fill, but the type of fill that I'm going to add is going to be a gradient. All right, I'm going to dismiss this panel. Now I need to make an adjustment to this gradient. So I'm going to hit the period key on my keyboard. And that's going to bring up the gradient panel. Make sure that the type is set to linear. If it's set to radial, just uh, switch over. All right, over here under angle, instead of zero, you could go with negative 90, but I'm going to go with uh, positive 90 for now because that's going to give me the darkest color on top and the brightest color at the bottom. All right, back in the appearance panel, I'm going to switch the stroke information so that now I have a gradient in there. So this was something that was introduced, I believe, in CS6 for the Creative Cloud. So if you're a Creative Cloud member, you have access to this feature. All right, now I'm going to make the stroke nice and big. So instead of it being at one point, I'm going to bring it up to about, I don't know, 10 points. Now, if you notice, it's actually hiding our fill now because we increased the size of that stroke. There's a couple ways uh, to work with that, but what I'm going to do is change the stacking order here in the appearance panel. I'm going to bring the stroke just below the fill and then release. All right, now that the fill is in front of the stroke, you see the strokes just kind of creeping from behind there. All right, so that looks pretty good, but I have to make a change to this gradient. So I'm going to target the stroke back in the gradient panel. Remember, we're leaving it set to linear, but I'm going to change this angle. Earlier, we changed it to 90. This time, I'm going to go with negative 90. That's going to give me the darkest color at the bottom with the brightest color on top. All right, I could get rid of this gradient panel. And now we have this text here with this uh, fake bevel emboss going on here. This is live text, so I could switch this over to say something else. Go ahead and accept that change. There we go. Now, I'm actually going to select my text and hit the D key on my keyboard to give it the default appearance of a white fill with a black stroke. Next, I'm going to show you a different technique, and that's using a live effect. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this stroke. If you take a look at the bottom left section of my screen, you're going to notice that I have the stroke activated already. So I'm going to hit the forward slash to get rid of that. Now you can't see it, but I do have a white fill in there. All right, back over here in the top under the effect menu, I'm going to find 3D and then choose extrude and bevel. All right, that's going to bring up the 3D extrude and bevel options. Now you could spin this guy around and play around with this however you want, but you really don't see anything going on. What you have to do is go to the bottom left section of this window and click on preview. All right, so I kind of made a mess of things in here, but this is a pretty fun way to play with this tool. Over here at the top, you have some presets for your position. I'm going to go with uh, front. Okay, that, give me, that gives me the front face of the text. All right, down over here under extrude and bevel. The bevel is currently set to none. If you click on this little drop down menu, you can switch over to classic, complex, any of these, but I'm going to go with rounded. All right, click on rounded, and now you already see you already see this effect happening right in here. Now, instead of changing the height right away, what I'm going to do is change these settings right in here. By default, it's set to bevel extent in, and that means that the bevel is going to be subtracted from the original object. So it's it's kind of making it look like your uh, words are getting thinner. This other one is the one I'm going to switch to, which is bevel extent out. The bevel is going to be added to the original object and it's going to give us some chunkier text. So when I click on that, there you go. So it already beefed that guy up a little bit. And when I change the height, look, I'm going to increase this little by little. If I hold down shift and the up arrow key, it's going to make a drastic change. 
And after a certain point, you see everything starts crashing into itself. So one thing I do want to point out, take a look over here at the letter A. You do run into situations like this. So what I'm going to do is just back off on this until I get the look I like. And it's going to get rid of some of those weird problems I had in there. All right. So right about there looks pretty good to me. Now, this is already fine, but you could make more adjustments beyond that. So click on this big button right here that says more options. And a couple cool things you could do is you could play around with the lighting in here. So if you want it to come up from the um, upper left portion, here's the highlights right in there. You could throw the light behind your object if you want. I like it up in front. You could add multiple light sources. So you have it going like that. Now I have a highlight coming from the right section. Now I'll throw another light down here to uh, join us in the bottom left section, something like that. And that gives me a pretty cool effect there. You could add as many lights as you want, I guess. I don't know how many it maxes out at, but remember you could delete lights as well. Just have it targeted and click on this little uh, trash can icon. Now you have a bunch of settings right here. Feel free to play around with them. Um, at first glance, you're probably like, where's the shadow functions at? But all you have to do is back off on the light and then the shadow appears. So you could change to a custom color if you wish. So the default one is going to be black. It switches over to red. And uh, right now I change this color uh, chip over to blue. All right, I liked it at black, that looked fine. I'm gonna click okay to accept that change. And this is all live text and it's also a live effect. So over here in the appearance panel, you could always click on this little link here, click preview and you'll be able to see the changes that you're making in real time. I'll click okay, double click on my text and check this out. All right, I'm gonna add something in here accept that change and everything is updated in real time. For both of these techniques, what you want to do is select your object, bring up your graphic styles and then click on this guy right here so that you'd be able to quickly apply these effects to any live text in the future. And there you have it folks, that's a quick look at Bevel Emboss on live text in Adobe Illustrator CC 2015.